Hey everyone, Will Button here. So I get asked on a pretty regular basis, what DevOps tool should I use or what configuration management tool should I use? And usually this question comes in the context of someone who either wants to start a career in DevOps or is looking to add DevOps skill sets to their existing team. So I thought I would address that for you today. I'm gonna to talk a little bit about Puppet, Chef, Elastic Beanstalk, and Ansible. And we'll talk about some other tools as well, but really I'm going to bring out the points of those and some of the things we talk about apply to any of the configuration management tools. So the biggest thing here is when you're choosing which one to start with, um, there's, there's other things that are going to influence what's the right decision to make. You know, looking for uh, knowledge that you already have that you can leverage. For example, um, you know, what, what tool or what application are you going to use this for? If you're deploying a Python application, uh, then I would steer away from Chef and Puppet because they're both based on Ruby, especially if you have no experience in Ruby, you know, because then you're going to spend time learning just how to do Ruby stuff. And then once you learn that, then you have to learn how to do Puppet or Chef stuff. And so it's just going to add a lot of learning to the whole overall experience versus if you have a Python project and you choose Ansible, well, Ansible uses Python. So now you're able to leverage coding skills that you already have, which puts you in the ability to, or puts you in a position where you can start delivering value faster. Another consideration is scale. How big is this project going to go? Um, if it's just for a small team on a few servers, um, when I personally approach that problem, that influences which tool I pick. And the most important thing to grasp here is what's is learning how to solve the problem. You know, if you do this long enough, you're going to work with all of them anyway. You're going to switch jobs where they use Chef and then go to another job where they use Puppet or for whatever reason, you're going to end up with Ansible. So you're going to use them all anyway. So which one you start with really doesn't matter. What's going to be the most value to you is learning to solve the problem. So by that, I mean, don't really focus on the details of how do I install Node.js with Chef, but instead focus on the business value that DevOps principles and DevOps method methodologies are going to bring to your team and your employer and your business, such as how do I deploy a new server automatically configured exactly as it should be. And so you're probably thinking, well, yeah, but at some point I do have to install Node.js with Chef, and you do. But framing it this way helps keep everything in perspective. When we, we have this tendency, when we learn a new thing, to get focused down on this minute detail, and then that leads to another detail. And then before you know it, we're all focused on solving a problem that doesn't even actually apply to us. And so... Breaking the learning task down into business objectives that provide value to the business is a great way to keep you on task. And so that leads me to the next point of breaking this down into manageable chunks using existing artifacts you have knowledge of. So by that, I mean pick a problem that you're already vested in. Um, let's If you have a Node.js application running in AWS, then focus on deploying, building, deploying, and configuring that with a DevOps tool instead of, you know, choosing a tutorial that tells you how to deploy and build or build um, WordPress and MySQL on physical hardware. You know, so the difference there in the way we solve this problem is you may not care about WordPress. You don't care about MySQL. You don't even have physical hardware. And so this tutorial is going to steer you off into other, other places. And it may be a great tutorial. It has nothing to do with the quality of the tutorial. It has to do with adding extra variables into the problem that you're trying to solve. So let's talk a little bit about the individual tools. I'm going to talk about Chef and Puppet, Ansible, and Elastic Beanstalk mainly because I have experience in those. Not um, There's other tools out there, and I'm not discounting them. I just either don't use them currently or haven't used them in a long time, and so I don't want to give you an opinion based on something that, um, you know, that I may not have the most up-to-date information on. 
So Chef and Puppet are the big dogs, and these two scale massively, but they require an investment up front. You have to build the infrastructure to support them. For Puppet, for instance, you've got to build the Puppet Master server. You've got to define your higher configuration. You have to configure your agent and some other tasks before you can even do task number one of installing an application on your server. So they're both great for managing large installations though. I mentioned in the, in the beginning of this video when we're talking about scale and Chef and Puppet are really, really great whenever you have to run at large scale. Ansible Tower is as well, um, but Ansible Tower has some additional stuff that we're going to uh, not initially address in here because there's a better way to do Ansible or an a easier way to learn Ansible. So let's talk, and let's talk a little bit about the background tasks I was just mentioning for Chef and Puppet. So let's say in your configuration, your, um, your config management defines Node.js 6.4 to be installed on your servers, and a developer goes out and installs Node.js 7. So when you're using something like Chef and Puppet, you've got this agent running in the background. It's going to pick up on that and it's going to remove node 7 and install chefs or install node 6.4 because that's what the configuration defines. And then it's also going to log that and report on that so that later when this developer comes to you and says, hey, there's a problem with the production application servers, you can take a look at it and say, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, there is a problem. The problem is you installed node.js 7 when Node.js 6.4 is our production version. And so that's one of the cool things about running, um, running configuration management and some of the longer term benefits of that. Ansible can do that as well, I mentioned, with Ansible Tower. But if you're just starting out down this journey, you're probably just going to want to do something like write an Ansible script and then just run it from the command line on your laptop or your workstation. It's going to go out and do its thing and it's done. And you're going to get excited and go, yeah, so then you'll add a little something else to it and then run that. And so it's this real iterative process that's command oriented. You know, there's not an agent running in the background. And so I think that's probably the one I recommend most. If you're just getting started and you're just working on a pet project or a personal project and there's nothing already in place to steer your decision otherwise, I would recommend Ansible. And then it'll scale, you know, using Ansible Tower, it'll scale up with you as well. Another big win for that is if you already have knowledge of Python, that's helpful. If you don't have knowledge of Python, Python's incredibly easy to learn, so you're not going to spend a ton of time focusing on how to Python when you're really wanting to how to Ansible. So that's kind of my recommendation there, unless you look at Elastic Beanstalk. So with Beanstalk, it's incredibly easy with this point and click interface, you know, and you're up and running and you're like, wow, why would I do anything else? This was super great and easy. And then your coworker comes along behind you and looks at your Beanstalk configuration and changes it and pushes it out. And that's what I consider to be the big failure or fallback not fallback, the big weak point of Beanstalk is there's not a really clear way for you to see that someone else has modified your Beanstalk configuration. So you're out operating in production based on information that's no longer true or valid. And so with the other tools I've mentioned here, Chef, Puppet, and Ansible, what I really recommend doing is storing your configuration management code in a Git repo. That way you deploy from the repo Whenever you make changes to it, you commit those changes to the repo, and then you get that full history of exactly what was changed and who changed it, which gets you out of that situation. So that was a lot. Let's wrap this up. Um, Elastic Beanstalk and some of the other tools in the AWS tool chain are incredibly easy to use, but can be confusing when working in a team environment because you're never really sure who changed what. The easiest way to get started in a greenfield environment, in my opinion, is with Ansible, and it scales quite well. Um, but if you know that you're going to be going large scale and absolutely have to positively guarantee that the configuration is accurate, uh, Chef and Puppet are great candidates for that. Or if you happen to have an existing Ruby environment, you know they're they're good candidates to fit in well there, which minimizes that learning curve. And so. 
Um, Chef, I really like the way Chef approaches the test-driven development um, method. It's re they make it much easier than Puppet does for you to um, for you to build these local installations and test it against local virtual machines before you push it out, and then define tests around that to you know assert that certain conditions are true at the end of the script run. Puppet does the same using RSpec and some other tools. Puppet's a little bit more difficult to set up. But fortunately, there's a Pluralsight course, shameless plug here, written by me. Uh, I'll put the link in the, in the video here. So there's a Pluralsight course that helps you get your Puppet configuration up and running. So you're, you build this really nice workflow that puts you in a test-driven development type scenario so that you know or so that you can count on certain things always being true in your configurations. Um, Chef has that as well. I mentioned my big turnoff with Chef is uh, the documentation. It feels like, and this was, this was from several years ago, so maybe they've changed this, but um, it felt like the open source docs weren't or the open source version wasn't reflected in the website documentation so the documentation on the website would be true for the paid version of chef but the behavior was different in the open source version and so it always felt like you were running this little crippled freemium version if you were using the open source version of chef but anyway that's uh that's my thoughts on that i hope that helps if it does help let me know um, if it didn't help, let me know that too. Would love to hear your thoughts on it. You can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at WF Button, or you can email me directly, will at willbutton.co. Thanks.